Hi friends, welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. This is Caitlin and today we are making a super fun Sizzix Thinlets colorized card featuring the new candle shop and festive gatherings sets, the die sets. So I ended up cutting every single die in this candle shop set and they're all marked on the back. So I'm going to show you in a second how I laid them all out for myself so that I didn't get confused because I really wanted to try making all three of these candles and both of the stands and it ended up going a lot better than I thought it was going to. From the festive gatherings I'm going to be using that holly uh, leaf that has just the one leaf and then that pine branch and we're just going to cut two of each of those. So I use those markings on the back of my dies and I kind of grouped my dies together in strips and I marked them all with um, like candle A1 right? Like dish one. Um, I labeled everything, which might seem a little excessive, but for your first time making these, I highly recommend this. I just added some washi tape. It's the um, Spellbinders best best tape ever, best craft tape ever. Um, I added that to the back to hold everything in place and it worked perfectly. Um, so I'm going in with Distress ink and antique linen first, and I am uh, working from my darkest to my lightest. So the the number one for all of these different sets is always going to be your darkest layer, and then it gets lighter as it goes up. So you definitely have a lot of wiggle room and freedom with these, but that's a really good rule of thumb. And then so to darken these, I'm going in with brush corduroy, also distress ink, on the men, on the Ranger Mini Ink Blender. Um, and so that first layer, that one, that solid candle, that got a lot of brush corduroy, right? And then the number two is going to get just like a, like a medium amount. The other layers are going to get barely any, like it's just going to be for texture. And I also brought in some of these mini teeny tiny detail brushes that are so amazing. They're so much fun. Um, let me see. I have them right here. They are the Pink Fresh Studio quarter inch round um, blending brushes, and they are a game changer for these kinds of little details. So to start adhering everything, I'm going in with some Lawn Fawn liquid glue, and I am just, again, working from the number one of the set all the way up through every through the set um, and then just trying to keep I make <laughs> I made one full candle at a time so that I wouldn't get confused by having multiple pieces out on the table at once so I'm adding adhesive to the back of each layer and then just taking my time layering it on the dies do etch um, little lines so that you can kind of line everything up easier. Uh, it has little embossed details in it to help show you where all of these little individual pieces go. And I love that Tim Holtz and Sizzix do that because it makes it a lot easier to use. Um, Sizzix also has like a guide online with all of the colors broken down for each layer so that you can really see it. But I really think if you mark your cardstock the way that I did, you really will have a lot easier time not getting confused. So I've tried these before where I just die cut everything and had it all laying out and inevitably I always end up getting confused. So <laughs> this is definitely the way I will be doing them from now on because it made it much easier. So this one's really fun because you get all of those amazing drips and you also get that really fun um, little puddle of wax at the bottom. This is definitely a very repetitive process, especially because I decided to make all three of my candles the same color story. You could definitely switch it up and have multiple different colors going on. And I love that these are not just holiday candles. They're just regular candles, right? So they could be um, for any kind of winter holiday. They could be for easily for Halloween. Um, I saw Tim had some amazing Halloween inspiration with them, and I was very tempted. If you've seen my videos before, you know that I love Halloween, um, but these really just were screaming for the Christmas treatment, especially with that festive gathering um, 
die set. They just work so beautifully together. So the same thing here for this shorter candle. I'm going in with antique linen first just to create a nice base for myself. Then going in with the brush corduroy, kind of ombre it, working from my darkest up to my lightest. If you have a little pick, it helps to pop out all of these little detail pieces here and there. And then I, again, just go in with my liquid glue and get everything. You want to make sure that you are keeping a balance where you're not using so much glue that it leaks out of the sides because once your fingers get sticky, these are very, get a lot harder to create but you wanna make sure that you get little dots of glue all over so that all of your die cuts lay really nice and flat. That's what I found in my experience. Um, especially for the candles, something like this where you want like a solid piece when you're done, you wanna make sure everything's nice and flat. For the pine branches that we do later, you'll see I added very little glue because I wanted them to be a little bit dimensional. I wanted them to kind of fluff up from my card base. So that's something you can keep in mind too with these like colorized layering dies that you can really change it up depending on what your goal is or what you are making. This one I think looks more like a 3D candle to me faster than any of the other ones because that nice deep kind of bowl in the top of the candle, um, that extra depth and that darker color on that first layer really pulls through and I think it gives a really fun dimension um, even though these are still pretty flat. So the last candle is going to be that long um, taper candle and I was tempted to do just this, like just this candle multiple times because it's so fun. Um, I love the dramatic height of it. Um, but also I just want to let you know, originally I was planning on using both of the stands, but I couldn't put this candle on the stand on my A2 size card. It did not fit. So keep that in mind if you're going to be working in slimline or... Um, a larger like five by seven card maybe, then you could definitely fit the tall candle on that taller stand. But for a standard A2, it's not going to completely fit inside your seam. Um, I was okay with that. We still made it work. I still got to use the dish. I'm good with it. But I just wasn't thinking of that when I originally cut everything out and um, inked it all up. So now I have a stand ready to go that I can use for another card in the future. Um, so yeah, those are my three candles ready to go. Then I decided to go in and work on the flames. I brought in one more of those Pink Fresh Studio mini brushes to add the orange color on top. I'm working with mustard seed and uh, crackling campfire for that burnt kind of orange. So the smaller flame that's going to go on the inside, I left that mostly yellow and the larger one got darkened up with that orange color and everything got a good layer of mustard first, just because I like the added dimension of having two colors wherever I can. So those just got glued into place. I made a third one just by popping it into um, that kind of spot on my paper with the washi tape holding it down just because it was so much easier than trying to ink around my fingers. Um, for the dish and the stand, I went in with the same color scheme. So I'm working with Hickory Smoke Distress Ink, doing a light wash of that all over everything, and then coming in with black soot to deepen up the edges and some specific layers like on the dish, that one small oval is gonna be the center of the dish where it would look deepest, even though it's raised up the most. Um, and then the solid stand that got darkened because that is the base and everything else is kind of shine on top of it. So then again, same thing for the dishes as it was for the candles. We just work from one all the way through those numbers. I love how these look and I think they just everything comes together so easily and they look so cute. These stands are really fun too because you can layer the taller stand over the dish so that you have like one giant holder 
or you can separate them. You can put multiple candles in that dish. You could put any of those three by themselves. I just thought it's the options with these are, are there's just so many options. Um, so for that stand, like I said, I'm including it in here so that you can see how it came together. Um, but it's not going to actually make it to the card that we make today, which like I said, is a really fun Christmas card. I don't know about you, but I'm very reluctantly starting to get into my holiday crafting. I, because I love Halloween so much, it's difficult for me to start my holiday uh, card making before like mid-November, but I'm trying really hard. Um, I did color in the wicks for the candles with N8 Copic sketch marker. Um, I just thought it would be so much easier and a lot more pigmented than trying to go in with the black soot. Then I added the flames just under those wicks, which was again a lot easier than I thought it would be. I just kind of added a touch of glue behind the wick and for those bigger candles it's a lot easier because you have kind of more for it to grip onto um, but that tall candle still wasn't a problem. Um, now on to our greenery. I'm going in with, with Rustic Wilderness for the pine branches and I'm going to use it for my holly as well. So I'm going through and just in the same direction that the pine needles go. I'm inking um, that so I don't kind of bend or fold my paper. Just being really careful. Same with the twigs, kind of following the line of that twig, not going side to side, but going along it. And I used um, the ground espresso for the branches as well as the entire kind of holly leaf base. Then I brought in some festive berries and I'm just kind of pouncing and twisting the color onto those berries. The paper that I cut these from ended up tearing, so I didn't feel confident in using the like tape from the back method like we did with the other die cuts, but in an ideal world, I would definitely recommend that if you can. It just makes inking everything up so much easier. So liquid glue, let me pop on those little berries and the holly. Now I'm gonna add just tiny dots of glue to those skinny branches and get those added on to those pine branches. This is just so much fun. To bring everything together and add one more level of kind of rustic feel, I'm using the cracked um, embossing folder from Sizzix and Tim Holtz as well. And I cut it with some craft cardstock and then went in with more of the ground espresso distress ink um, to really pop all of that texture. And I just, like I said, I think that this brings everything together. It kind of bridges the grunginess that a lot of Tim Holtz's products can have, but also still warms everything up um, and makes it a really warm and cozy Christmas card to me. So I borrowed a Spellbinders sentiment and I stamped it with the same festive berry ink. So we're just going to have a little Merry Christmas sentiment strip and I'm inking up the edges with that ground espresso so that it kind of blends in with my um, with that wood grain background. I borrowed some, well, I didn't borrow. I took some red cardstock from um, one of Honeybee Stamps um, paper pads from last year. I just love that super deep, dark red. So I laid that down with liquid glue on my card base. Then I added my cracked layer with some liquid glue as well and really pressed that down. I kind of held my candles in place here and there where I needed to as I adhered my branches because I wanted to make sure that they were up high enough that they would be seen over the tops of the candles. I was slightly concerned that it would look like the greenery was on fire, but I think I managed to avoid that effect. Um, same thing, I'm holding my dish in place here now. It's not glued down. I'm just using it as a placeholder to make sure that my candles are going in the right position. So I have the two bigger candles in the back laid down flat with liquid glue. Then I'm going to tuck my holly berries in and glue those down with liquid glue as well. 
And you can already see I pulled out my um, foam, my 3D foam squares. These are the thin ones. And I love the tiny hint of dimension that they give on top of how these layered die sets already look. So I use that to pop up my dish. I had glued down the leafy part of the holly, but not the berries. And I decided them kind of hanging out was too much. Um, so I'm going to add two layers of these foam squares to this center section. So that way my candle can still sit above the dish and still look like it's flat. So I popped that right into place. Those three squares are enough to hold it there. And I also popped up my sentiment strip with some of those little thin squares as well and kind of situated my sentiment banner right across the top and that brings my card together. I know this seemed a little bit tedious, I bet, but it is 100% worth it. I cannot recommend these enough. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and you check out scrapbookpal.com's blog for even more crafty inspiration. I hope that you guys have an amazing day and as always, happy crafting.